Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of thermal and bond energies. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps promote this channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be working with. So we have a temperature versus energy added diagram for one kilogram of kryptonite. Um, substance A at one temperature and one kilogram of kryptonite substance B at a different temperature. The contents of the container of A are 67% liquid, 33% gas, B 75% solid, 25% liquid. Lex combines both of these together, both of the kryptonites together, and it all comes to equilibrium. So the first thing that we have to do is on the graph above label the points that represent the states of the kryptonite. Then we have to draw an energy interaction diagram that represents the change of the system. And then part two is, we're gonna get to part two in a second. Let's just do part one first. So as you can see, I have everything um, written down over here. So this is the original graph and then this one's for part B. Uh, both of these substances are kryptonite. They have exactly the same mass and we're giving you know the initial states and basically we just have to put the initial states over here so let's just go ahead and do that that should be easy enough substance a is initially in a mixed state liquid and gas so it's two-thirds one-third so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the um, section of the graph that represents this uh, liquid and gas which would be this part over here, because this one is for uh, solid and liquid, and this one is for liquid to gas. So we want thirds, so I'm, going, I'm just gonna divide this into thirds. Like this, so one third, two thirds, three thirds, and then we have two thirds as a liquid, one third, as a gas, so basically that would put us over here. Like this. So this means that we have more liquid than gas because this is sort of like the percentage of gas. So 33% gas, 66% gas, 100% gas. That's, that's how it goes. So let me just write that, 33 gas, 67 gas, and then you get here and that will be your 100% mark conversion to gas. And now for substance B, we're also in a mixture, but now I guess I should divide it in fourths because this is one fourth, three fourths. So we are gonna do exactly the same procedure one, two, three, four. So this would be 25% um, liquid, 50, 75, 100% liquid. Now in this case, substance B is a 25% liquid. So this is where I'm putting B. So this is where I'm putting A, this one, and this is B initial initial again you have to sort of like go you know by percentages like this is zero percent um liquid this is a hundred percent liquid zero percent a hundred percent gas that's how the conversion works as you move to the right so that was uh that's part a so now let's see what part b is asking of us Draw an energy interaction diagram that represents the change of the system from the point where the quantities are combined to when they reach equilibrium. Okay, so for that I do have a little bit of a helping aid that I made by just reading through the 7a book, which is on how to draw the energy interaction diagrams, just to make sure that I always get them complete and I'm, that I'm not missing anything. So from my notes, the first thing that we have to do is define what's the system. Okay, so let's just do this. So the system in this case is the um, two containers 
of kryptonite. And then for my notes, 7a also requires that you do this thing, this interval, initial and final, so. So your interval is initial before mixing. And then final is when they reach thermal equilibrium. Okay, so now the third thing that I have on my notes here is um, to decide whether this system is open or closed. If it's open, the big bubble has to be dashed. If it's closed, we don't dash it. In this case, it's closed because uh, the instruction says, um, the instructions say that it's thermally insulated. So because it's thermally insulated, then that means close. So I'm just gonna draw solid line closed and closed means that there is no heat work this is here thermally insulated nothing is going in or out that's what it's supposed to symbolize now how many energy changes do we have well let's see so in this case we're gonna have a total of let's see how many lines i have here so one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna no one, one, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that means that our final state is gonna be one, two, three, one, two, three, somewhere here. This would be the equilibrium point. How do I know? Well. In this particular case, both substances are uh, the exact same substance, both are kryptonite and they both are one kilogram. That means that when mixed together, oh, and this is thermally insulated. That means that for every line that this guy loses, so for every jump that this one makes to the left, this one gets that energy and uses it to move to the right. So that means, that our middle point is going to be exactly here in the middle. Now again, this only happens because both substances are, you know, the same substance and also we have exactly the same amount of mass. So that means that, you know, this is, you know, perfectly in equilibrium in the sense that for every line that this one moves left, this one moves right. Now, if A had twice the amount of mass, then for every one line that this one moves, this one moves two and so on and so forth. But this, this one is an easy example. So now our ending point is over here. So that means that we're gonna have four bubbles, two for A and two for B. So let me just use different colors over here. So we're gonna use two for A. And then we're gonna use two for B. Okay, so each bubble should have object type of energy, changing indicator, so, so, so. Okay, so let's do this. Um, so these two are for A, substance A, substance A, this is B, this is B, and then both substances first are gonna have bond energy. A is losing energy, so E bond is going down like this because the gas or vapor or whatever is going down. It's gonna get converted into 0% gas and then go to liquid. B on the other hand has bond energy going up because uh, the amount of liquid is going up. Now, similarly, if you wanna do even down because liquid up, even up because solid down, then that's that's fine, it's, it's the same thing. I just personally like to do down, down, up, up, but if you wanna do it, you know, this one with liquid, this one with solid, it's the same thing. And then once both of them reach this point or this point for B, 
we also have a change in temperature for both. So A is gonna drop all the way here and then B is gonna come up a little bit. So how do we represent this? So this would be E thermal for A goes down because uh, temperature of A goes down and then E thermal for B goes up because temperature of B goes up. And that's basically how we do it. Now, um, we should also do indicator initial, indicator final. So let's just go ahead and do so. So I'm doing gas here, gas initial, gas final. The initial percentage of gas for A is 33%. Final, 0%. I'm doing liquid for this one. Liquid initial, liquid final. Again, I'm just ticking off all of the check marks in order to have full credit for my answer. Initial and final. Initial liquid is 25%. Final is 100%. So that's your increase. And then your... Um, temperature um, T initial for A T final T initial for B T final so your initial for A would be um, your boiling point for B would be your melting point and then we don't really have this value. We could easily get it if we if we do the equation, but that wasn't asked of us. And on a quiz, I wouldn't really recommend doing things that you weren't asked to do. So I'm just gonna say that this went down and then this went up just by looking at the graph. Again, it will be very easy to just calculate the value, but I'm not gonna do it. And then the last thing that you know the book says that you have to do is put an equation over here. Um, one term per bubble, and then all of the changes are equal to Q plus W, okay? So our equation, we're going to have four terms, and they should all be equal to zero because this system is closed. So let's just go ahead and write our equation. It's actually super easy because you already have your energy uh, bubbles over here, so you just go one by one. So delta B, oh, delta E bond A plus delta E thermal A, which is this bubble, delta E bond B plus this bubble, which is a thermal one, T H uh, B, this should all be equal to zero, and that's final answer. That's the equation. So now we have everything that we need in order to get full credit. System, interval, open, closed, or bubbles, initial, finals, and then uh, five equation. So there we go, that's our final answer. So now let's just move on to uh, part B and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, put the problem back on the screen for you guys. So for part B is every grid mark on the axis above represents the same value as it does in the graph from problem number one. A. Sketch as, accurate, as accurately as you can the graph that will represent temperature versus energy for two kilograms of kryptonite. B. Label with an F on this graph the point that represents the final equilibrium state of the two kilograms of kryptonite from problem one what phase or phases are present in the final state. Briefly explain. Okay, so this graph was for one kilogram. So now this one is for two kilograms. Now the, um, the scale is the same. And as you can see, I kind of went ahead, uh, you know, maybe ahead of time and just put these ones exactly on the same scale. And the reason for that is because regardless of the mass of the object, its melting point and boiling point are gonna be the same. So for example, when you have a glass, when, when you have like one kilogram of water, 
you know, the boiling point is 100 degrees, whether it's one kilogram or like the entire sea, right? Like that's, that's the, um, it's a property of, uh, it's the property of the matter itself. It's not dependent on the mass. So melting and boiling points are going to be the same, but then what's changing? Well, this x-axis is going to be different because even though one glass of water and 10 glasses of water are going to have the same boiling point, it takes 10 times more energy to boil 10 glasses of um, water versus one glass of water, right? So basically, if you have twice the amount of mass, you need twice the amount of energy in order to melt it or boil it. So this first part was two dashes. So this first part that goes to the melting point should be four dashes long. So four dashes long instead of two, twice the amount of energy. And then we're gonna do twice the amount of energy. So one, two, three, four. So that should be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this part should be like this. Then this part is two dashes long, so this should be four. One, two, three, four to get over here. So that would be four dashes long. And then this one, you know, we would just multiply them out. Well, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, then this one will be 12 dashes long just because we're multiplying everything times two because again, twice the amount of mass, twice the amount of energy. But these two, should be exactly the same. You shouldn't really be like stretching it out or anything. That's not how it works. All right, so now label with an F on this graph, the point that represents the final equilibrium state of the two kilograms of kryptonite from problem one. What phase or phases are present in the final state? Briefly explain. Well, actually we are just gonna be exactly on the same you know, even, even though everything is elongated times two, we would still do the exact same process of like doing one jump to the left, one jump to the right, one jump to the left, one jump to the right. So in this case, we move three and a half spaces, right? This one moved three and a half spaces to the left. This one moved three and a half spaces to the right and they met in the middle. So now basically what will happen is instead of three and a half spaces, they would move seven. So say this one was, so this one would start over here, right? At 25%. So now instead of moving three and a half spaces, it would move seven spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the final state would be over here. And again, if we were able to actually put this, which it was one, two, so it should be four. Um, one, two, three, four. So it would start over here. Again, because the composition has to be the same, you know, you just divide it in quarters over here, thirds over here, and then this one will move seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. like this. So now instead of moving 3.5, we move over here, but it's basically the same proportion. I mean, um, if you have two kilograms and two kilograms and it's the same proportion, it's the same experiment, you're going to end up exactly the same. It's just going to be like, it's just going to take more energy going to the left and right because now you have more mass, but the process is exactly the same. So this is basically where we are going to um, finish the uh, mixing process. This is thermal equilibrium right here. So anyways, this is the end of this uh, practice problem. If you guys found it helpful, please make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer them all. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!